Now, about a week ago, a challenge of major importance, <laughs> wink wink, started between my channel and another channel called Major Hardware. If you haven't seen his videos, check it out in the link in the description below. He has a pretty cool channel. Now, in this actual challenge, we try and build a sub ambient air cooler. Now, my first attempt didn't go very well, and well, some PC components almost died. But then Major Hardware came and he did it better than I did. So then I decided to steal all of his ideas in this video, but try and refine it with my own use of duct tape. Now don't think for a moment that what you see in this video is going to be the final version of this contraption. It's more like a proof of concept 2.0 before we get into some more exotic materials. But first, I just want to know whether or not this contraption actually works the way I intended to. Now with all of that out the way, let's have a look at the actual construction of the contraption so that we can see whether or not it works. Welcome to another episode of David Duct Tape's Cardboard to Random PC Components. And as you can see, the current setup looks fairly similar to what Major Hardware was doing, but it's very different in here. So this is a styrofoam uh, cool box, and inside here there's a way to force the air to go through the ice instead of just kind of nearby it. So hopefully that'll help do drop the temperatures for the CPU over here. So one of the big ideas that I stole from major hardware was to not try and cool the entire PC, but just do the, the CPU. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. So then over here, we have a measurement of the ambient temperature up here, so where the air goes into this box. And then over here, we have a temperature probe that is kind of popped in there. So it's actually gonna take the air temperature just before the air out of the cool box hits the CPU. And this is what it looks like inside of the box. Now, as you can see, this is kind of like a catchment area for ice. So I'm gonna put a bunch of ice there and then I've got a little lid over here so that I can actually put ice underneath there as well. Now, as you can see, this pipe actually attaches to the hose that goes to the CPU cooler. So what's gonna happen is the fan over here is gonna push air down. And the only way that the fresh air actually has to escape this box is to go through the ice here and then underneath into that tube and then out there. We've got a fan sucking air in here and we've got two fans kind of pulling through. So hopefully there's enough pressure in this system to actually force the, the air through the ice. So the pipe isn't long enough to touch the base. So when it's connected up here, there's actually gonna be quite a gap between the bottom of the pipe and the bottom of the cooler box. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start it up and then do a control run, and then we're gonna fill up some ice and we're gonna see how it goes. Okay, so after about 20 minutes, we're at 60 degrees Celsius. So that's the baseline that we're gonna use. And then over here for the ambient temperature, we've got 24.1 degrees Celsius, both outside and uh, in the tube. And one of the reasons that this test is quite important, because this temperature is pretty good for this system, is that it shows there's good airflow through this entire loop. You can actually hear the air in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some ice and we're gonna see how low we can get that temperature and this temperature. Oh, 
So I've started up IDO 64 and as you can see, the idle temperature is actually 25 degrees Celsius on the CPU. Now that's actually worse than I got last time. Um, oh, come on, focus. That's actually worse than I got last time. But as you can see, the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature in the tube is actually still dropping and it's quite good. That's quite a good difference. We're getting close to a 10 degree difference. It's a bit disappointing that it's not working as well as the previous attempt of mine, but hopefully this system will lead to me actually being able to finish an Ida 64 run. Okay, so we're almost five minutes in and we're sitting at about 55 degrees Celsius on the CPU and it drops down to 54 occasionally. And then as far as the difference between ambient and the actual temperature in the tube, we're almost 10 degrees cooler when it comes to the tube over here. But I think at this point, this is pretty much the temperatures we're gonna get. I'm still gonna run it for the next 15 minutes and see how it goes. But I'm gonna have to pull out even more stops to get this thing cooler. I think we're at the limit of what supermarket ice um, in this setup can do. We're currently at 20 minutes into the test run. And as you can see, the temperature is actually getting pretty close to what it was before, so it's only about only about four degrees cooler than it was, and it's kind of jumping between four and two degrees cooler than the previous test. And then up here, you can see that the ambient temperature, the difference between ambient and the internal temperature is actually climbing. And that's because the ice is melting. So it really struggles to keep it cool, even for a 20 minute IDA 64 run. So that kind of shows you that one of the big issues with this whole test setup is how long the ice can actually stay cold. And then just to illustrate the fact that the ice is the big problem here is because this is all that's left of the ice after just about half an hour of running and down there it's just water. So yeah, the ice melts way too quickly. And with that, it brings me to the end of the second proof of concept. This time I made it all the way through an IDA64 run. Major hardware, I know that I did kind of loosely base my design on yours, um, but it works really well, so kudos on that. And um, yes, again, if you're watching this video and you haven't checked out Major Hardware's channel yet, please do so in the link in the description below. And next time, we're not gonna have only a couple degrees of difference. Next time, it's gonna make a big difference. It's gonna make condensation amounts of difference, if you know where I'm going with that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.